What is going on, guys? It's Stab, and today we're back with week one of the Stab League, season two. Finally back with some action, and today we're taking on my good friend Balfrey and the Colorado Aggrons. As you will know if you have paid attention, uh, season two ha has started, and yesterday, or at least it should be yesterday, I uploaded a team analysis to go over the detailed sets of why I brought each set and uh, what it's supposed to do and all that. That link will be in the description. However, if you don't have time to check that out, I'll do a quick rundown right here of the team that I chose to bring and kind of a pre-game analysis of what Balfrey chose to bring as well. Basically, we we're bringing a three attacks, Swords Dance, Mega Heracross, a Substitute Baton Pass, Scolipede, a Trick Room, and uh, not Trick Room, Shift Gear and Call My Magirna, uh, Mixed Attack and Greninja, Defensive Talonflame, and a Sub Swords Dance, Landorus. So, Balfrey brought three things that I expected him to bring in the Excadrill, the Latias, the Kangaskhan, and then three more that I thought there were possibilities they would bring, and um, maybe not necessarily that he definitely would bring them, but they are here and we do have to deal with them. Those being the Infernape, Tababu, and Slowbro. Now let's talk about quickly what's not here, and what's not here includes things like Suicune, his two Alolans, Alolan Muck, and Alolan Ninetales. Uh, basically, those are the three more important things as far as what he didn't bring. Obviously, he didn't bring Chansey either, so that wasn't something I expected him to bring. However, the other three that were previously mentioned, I thought might be here. Uh, Alolan Ninetales gave him a fast threat that hit my hair across super effectively, which is a massive threat to his team, especially with the nature of my team, which if you haven't figured by now, is the Baton Pass for Scolipede, and hopefully just win the game pretty quickly here. But Alolan Ninetales could set up a Roar Veil to uh, deter the speed of my sweep and make me have to get more Swords Dances and maybe revenge me and knock me out and all this other bullshit, but it's not here, so we don't have to deal with that. Um... Suicune is not here. Uh, Suicune, I figured out, was a you know a decent response to the setup nature of my team. It can go for a roar and kind of deter me from getting set up and trying to break his team that way. But it's not here, so that was probably his most reliable way to stop my setup. And then finally, Alone Muck is not here. Alone Muck um, didn't really serve much purpose other than the fact that it was the best way to... Uh, defensively check my Magirna in the fact that it was the only thing on his team that could take more than two hits. Because that's not here, if I screw up my uh, pre um, attempted Heracross sweep, I do have Magirna in the back to kind of break his team a little bit better. Um, barring, um, well not barring, but granted that I'm able to get rid of the Infernape because that's really the only major threat he has to him. He could have uh, earthquake on Ice Drill, he could have Earthquake on uh, Kangaskhan, so we do have to watch out for that. But Infernape just straight up is a pretty big threat to Magirna. Uh, as far as what Balfrey brought, again, he chose to bring Infernape, Excadrill, Latias, maybe Kangaskhan, Tababu, and Slowbro. And basically, what I expected from each was that the Infernape was one of two things I, fig I figured. Either it was going to be a Zemon. Um, maybe like Inferno Overdrive, maybe uh, like Continental Crush for a potential Thunderous, um, even though Ice Punch would probably hit him harder. He could bring Sub Zero Slammer, of course. Or if it wasn't Zemon, it would be a Focus Sash variant because it could potentially derail my Heracross and Revenge Kill it and stop it from beating his entire team. Uh, he does have the X Girl here. I don't think it would be Hazard Removal. I think it's more of an offensive Scarf variant, especially if it's designed to deal with something like the uh, Thunderous, which it didn't end up bringing. Uh, Lottie's probably just a classic support variant, um, and with Defog, just to stop me from hazard stacking him. Uh, Kangaskhan's probably just four attacks, maybe power punch, but definitely just a more offensive variant uh, Pokemon. Uh, it might have Sucker Punch as well, just because his team that he brought appears to be kind of slow. Um, Top of Bulu is probably a strong hitter, so probably like a banded variant, just to do as much damage as possible. Slowbro, I don't really know why it's here, especially if you're fearing... Uh, Thunderous to be a pretty big threat to your team. I don't think that it deals well with too much of my team unless he thought the sp Psychic Spam would help him out against things like my Scorpede and my Mega Heracross. Anyway, without further ado, it's already been almost five minutes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the game. Basically, my plan, like I said, revolves around time passing into my Heracross and hopefully winning the game pretty quickly. To do that, I need to lead off my Scorpede, and based on what his lead is, will dictate my next play. So we're going to go ahead and get into the game, and I'll be pausing periodically 
basically to explain kind of the plays and thoughts I had each turn. Uh, he does lead off his Mega Kangaskhan, which is which is actually the best lead for me because I have ninety nine percent chance that he's going for fake out here, which he actually does, which is great. Um, I am able to protect, get my full speed boost, and now he can sub for pretty much free as he actually switches out, leading me to believe that he either didn't want to risk my a risk return if it should I go hard to my Magirna or my Landris, or um, he doesn't have Earthquake. The fact that he went into his Excadrill probably just means that he's faster than my Scolipede, um, which is actually not true anymore. So maybe he predicted me to go into something like my either hard my um, Heracross or maybe my Greninja. Anyway, I'm just going to sub up on this and uh, go ahead and baton pass out of my Heracross, and it is about time because basically I know if he goes for an offensive move, he can pretty much break my sub with anything he wants to go for. However, I ran some quick calcs that Excadrill can't actually touch me at all, especially if he's a Scarf variant that I'm expecting. So this is basically a free SD. I do lose my sub, which isn't too bad. That crit is actually funny because the roll, if he got a lower roll, he might not have been able to break it. Uh, it did like 23 to 27%, so there's a chance I could have survived my sub. However, he does crit me. It doesn't really matter. Now, he makes a weird play here, and he decides that he's going to switch into this as Slowbro. Now, based on what happens on the next turn, I'm thinking that he believes Slowbro to be his most useless Pokemon, so he could go into his Sash and Fernape and, um, you know, derail my sweep, quick flare blades, knock me out, uh, and uh, GG, Mr. Heracross, he got one kill, and Baton Pass plan failed. However, if... I'm going to go for this move regardless, and the reason is I can revenge him with my Greninja pretty easily just because if he's focused Sash, he can't outspeed me. Uh, he can mock Punch me, but I should be able to live... Or, alternatively, I can also just go hard into my Landris and intimidate him. And because he would be a Sash and he wouldn't have the attacking power to knock me out with Ice Punch. And then I can kind of go from there, either clicking Knock Off or clicking Swords Dance, depending on what he wants to come in with. Um, we still don't know his Kangaskhan set. He could have Ice Punch. But I am just able to knock out the... Uh, what do I do? I knock out the Inferno if he's not Sash. And now it's basically watch Heracross go in. He has no switch in. He has no way to outspeed this. And he has no way to um he has no way to basically beat my team at all he's gonna go for fake out here it's gonna hit twice because of the parental bond being stupid but uh i'm just gonna go for the bullets and uh, not the bullet seed the uh pin missile on the next turn and get what is this four hits and knock him out and then he's down to his x drill and his uh type of boo even if he's scarf it doesn't matter i'm at plus two speed i do not speed this this is like 500 speed at uh, heracross and uh yeah i can click close combat knock this thing out and then he is down to his last pokemon being the top of bulu all i have to do is click the uh pin whistle and we're gonna win this game by a score of 6-0. Um, Balfour didn't play badly. He just didn't have anything to check my baton pass strategy. And it's not that he, you know, he is a bad team. He's a very strong team. But again, he didn't have anything to deal with the strategy that I chose to bring this week. And from there, once I got the Swords Ants up, Heracross killed his whole team, um, Oko'd everything. So, you know, definitely a matchup advantage in my favor. But Balfour shouldn't be. Uh, down on himself at all, he tried. Um, next week, you know, he'll rank bound again. Uh, Balfrey is probably one of the strongest threats in the league. Um, other than, of course, Crobat for the win, Tony Dance of the God. Uh, <laughs> we do have to play him eventually, so that's going to be a good game. Uh, as far as next week, we do take on oh. we do take on Nick and the uh, Atlantic Gladiators. That should be a really fun game. The... Uh, we haven't played we haven't played in an actual battle since we were probably eight or ten years old, so it's gonna be a fun one. And uh, yeah, so if you guys enjoy the battle, leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, subscribe if you're not. Anyway, guys, I'm Step and I'm out.